Hey guys, in today's video, we're gonna talk about what I think is the absolute number one drill you could do to improve your golf swing. I'm gonna show you what that is, and most importantly, how you could put that in your swing to hit the ball more solid, consistently, and much farther. Let's get started. I wanna to talk to you today about Live View Golf. Now you guys hear me say all the time that you need feedback when you're practicing. You need to know if you're actually doing what you're trying to do. And the best way to give yourself feedback ultimately is video. And not only is video the best way to give yourself feedback, but being able to see yourself simultaneously as you're doing a movement is the best form of video feedback. It's the best way I've seen to make changes in your swing and be able to correlate the differences between your feels and your reels. Live View is super easy to use and set up. Simply set it up behind or in front of you. You connect it with your iPad or phone, pop that on the ground. You can actually do your practice, see yourself as you're doing it, the best way to expedite your process. I encourage you guys to check out Live View Golf. We'll put a link in the description down below with a coupon code. Hey guys, Eric here out at the Bethlehem Golf Club. In today's video, we're gonna talk about that number one drill that I mentioned. As we get started, real quick, I want you guys to check out kagornogolf.com. If you're looking to improve your game, even if you know what your issues are and you feel stuck and unable to fix those, we have solutions for you. You can actually schedule a 15 minute phone call with myself, we'll put a plan together, get you started improving kagornogolf.com put that link down below. And guys, as you guys are watching, as always, if you could just click that little gray thumbs up button down there below the screen, that would really help us out and uh, we would really appreciate that. So, in today's video, what I think is the number one most important thing in a golf swing, and what that is, is the arc that the club head travels during the downswing. And let me explain what I mean. The best golfers that I've seen, both in person, online, wherever, if you look at the arc that the club head travels, what they're able to do is get both the club head and the butt of the club as far away from their body as possible without their head moving forward. The best golfers are able to get the club head and the butt of the club as far away from them as possible without their head moving forward. What we would call that right in the golf industry is a long arc follow through. And if I could from here on out, if there was some kind of magical thing that happens, Eric, you're only allowed to teach one thing to every golfer you meet for the rest of time. What is that one thing? I would teach them the long arc follow through. I would teach them how to get the butt of the club and the club head as far away from them as possible without their torso moving forward. As we look at golfers at kagornogolf.com that come in, you could pretty much right away tell someone's ball striking ability and their handicap level by the width or the length of the arc of the club in the follow through. So meaning, as the ball striking gets a little bit worse, as their handicap goes higher, you would see follow throughs that look much more like this. This might be you, right, if you look at your swing on video. The butt of the club's very close to their hip and the club head is not very far away. Now note if I go here, let's say maybe this is a 30 handicap player. As I start to push this farther away, this is the motion that we would see the top players. I'll show you some of this on the screen. So long arc follow through. Now, how do you get the club head as far away from you as possible without your head moving forward? It starts with arm structure. So in simple terms, you keep your arms the straightest the longest. If I go into my follow through position in my downswing and my arms are as straight as they can get, that gets the club head as far away from me as possible. Now as I slowly start to bend my arms, notice what happens to the club head. It gets closer and closer and closer to me. Now if I bring that back down to the golf ball, that's way above the ball. So why is it important that we keep our arms straight in the first place as we bring those back down? is so that I can consistently hit the ball solid. Hit the ball first and the ground second. If we look at from the down to line angle, the distance between my shoulder and the club, that distance that gets, the idea would be the more constant I could keep that distance, the easier it would be to consistently strike the ball solid, eliminate fats and thins, and hit a good day to day. The more that distance is changing back and forth, you can see that changes the club head 
relative to the ground and makes consistent contact much more difficult. So the better the player, the straighter the arms are until about this position in the follow through where the arms are parallel to the ground. Now notice as I'm doing that, and this would be the first thing that I would want someone to learn, how do I keep my arms straight? Notice my elbows stay very close together. So from here, for me to have my arms straight, my elbows are close. As my elbows get farther away, the butt of the club gets closer to me, my arms get shorter, right? Here's my arms getting longer. So the arm straight piece. So even in the beginning, the first thing I would do, and I'm gonna give you a little extra drill in case just the feels don't work as we go, would be can I keep my elbows squeezed together and my arm straight first, things first? And then we'll work our way into this drill. So at setup position, let's say my elbows are six inches apart. I just wanna be able to make a little half swing first. My elbows stay six inches apart, stay six inches apart, stay six inches apart. And just control that piece first. I've got a seven iron here. I'm just gonna hit a little punch shot. Keep the arms straight and control the contact. Now you can't play a full golf course like that, but that's just step one of controlling the arm structure, the width. Now we said wide arc is good, narrow arc is bad. To have a wide arc, we need to have the arm straighter. Now to keep the arm straight for that long into the swing, I need to be able to move my body correctly. And there's really two main parts to this. One is rotation and the other is extension. Now the more that I do both of those, or if I do those enough, I'm able to maintain that arm structure, which is most important. Let's start with the turning piece. If I take my setup, and you can do this and try this right along with me, if I take my setup and I keep my body facing the ball and I try and keep my arms straight into the follow through, I get to about here, about 45 degrees, and that's where I run out. Physically, I can't go any farther. If I keep going, what happens is my arms start to fold. So for those of you that have this chicken wing look, butt of the club close, narrow arc, inconsistent contact, high dynamic loft, right, hit it shorter than you want, you have no turn. Now all of a sudden, if I turn my body, I'm able to keep those arms straight. So what I wanna do, first things first, keep the elbows close, keep my arms straight from about hip high to hip high. I wanna make sure that I turn my body in the follow through. So by the time I get to the arms parallel to the ground, this would be kind of step two, I wanna make sure my knees, hips, chest, and shoulders are all square to the target. So after I was able to just hit a couple with the arm straight feel, I would add in the turning feel. So arms stay straight, and now my body's turned. So my knees, hips, chest, shoulders are towards the target. Now as I make my backswing, of course at some point, my trail arm is gonna fold, right? So when I'm saying arm straight, my trail arm will have a little bit of fold during my backswing, but I wanna keep them straight to here in the follow through. Then we'll talk about how to finish. So part two is body turning. Simply put, if I don't turn enough, I can't keep my arm straight. If I can't keep my arm straight, I can't have a wide arc. If I don't have a wide arc, my contact's gonna be less consistent. I'm gonna hit the ball shorter. The second part is extension. So from this side, that would be me getting my chest up towards the sky and hips forward. During my follow through, I need to have this extension, okay? If I do that, let me do that extension here and turn towards the target, that looks perfectly normal, right? Now, why does this matter? How do I, or why do I need extension to keep my arms straight? Let's do a swing here where I'm trying to keep my arms straight and you try this again and keep your arms straight, but now let your, keep your chest facing down towards the ground and get your head forward. The same thing happens. I run out of space here where I can only keep my arms straight <clears throat> until about this far. And if I start to add any speed to it, my arms start to fold up quick again. So if my hips stay back and my head goes forward, my arms fold, I can't have that wide arc. So I need to have extension. So as I'm turning, right, my arms are straight. As I'm turning my body, I need extension. That extension is gonna be my rib cage and my chest pointing up towards the sky. That would be layer three to this. So my arms are straight. I'm turning my body to the point where my whole body's facing the target by arms parallel. And now I want some extension, which is my rib cage and my chest up towards the sky. Arms straight, turn with extension. 
And now I'm able to add a little bit more speed and power there, but I still maintain the same structure. That club head is as far away from me as possible without my torso going forward. This extension piece is the piece that keeps my head back. So I mentioned what the best players are able to do in the simplest sense is have the club head as far away and the butt of the club as far away as possible without their head going forward. Here's a line in line with the golf ball. What I'm trying to do is keep my head preset over that line. I'm trying to keep my head over that line like it's a wall while I'm having my arms extended. How do I do that? Extension. So my rib cage and my chest are up. So as I'm hitting, I'm going arm straight, turn with extension. And again, that's chest up, rib cage up towards the sky. My hips are forward and my arms are pushed away. That would be like the fundamental basics that I want to practice for consistent contact. Now, as I'm extending, <clears throat> if I stand here to the ball, when I take my setup, I'm bent over, right? I'm bent forward. So when I extend, notice here too, so let's do two different things. One, stay bent over and try and lift your arms and keep your arms straight. Well, you can get to about here. Notice as I keep extending, I can keep my arms straight for longer. That's why that's so important in the follow through. But the extension piece, how do I hit the ball when I'm standing up through the ball? All right, see how this extension makes my club raise up? The answer to that is through side bend or tilt. So notice from the down the line angle, when I come through, my body is going to be tilted over. My right shoulder is lower than my left. So how I get to this wide arc follow through, I said I need my arms straight. Well, I can only keep my arms straight if I'm extended. Well, if I'm extended, how do I get down to the ball? I need side bend, right, or tilt, which is my right shoulder lower. And that's the last little piece of this puzzle. As you're working through here, the arms stay straight. My body has turned. My rib cage and chest are up towards the sky, but my right shoulder is down. So rib cage and chest up, shoulder down. Rib cage and chest up, shoulder down. So you see how in my follow through that my body's still tilted over. My right shoulder's lower than my left, my neck is even tilted. That's the piece that keeps me the same distance from the ground. So as you're practicing this, elbows stay the same distance, arms stay straight. That's gonna be piece number one. And notice as I'm swinging here, as you're practicing your golf swing, this is a basic fundamental drill you could do forever. And I would do at about this swing length that I'm doing about to left arm parallel or lead arm parallel to the ground in the backswing and about the same in the follow through. So it's kind of like a three quarter fundamental drill. Arms are straight, body's fully turned. I'm just ramping up speed a little bit here, but notice in the same position, knees, hip, chest, shoulders all the way towards the target. I don't have my right foot, right knee, right hip back. That's gonna make me bend my arms narrow arc. I'm fully turned chest and rib cage are pointed up towards the sky, right? If I just started to do some little practice hits here with no backswing to my follow through, keep my head over the stick, turn my body, chest up, right shoulder down. This is how I'd start if you're just trying to feel it. Use a mirror, keep your head right where you're starting, keep your arms extended, turn your body, chest and rib cage up, right shoulder down into your follow through. Those are the pieces we want to feel. I would do one or two like that first. And then I can work those into my swing on the way through. The blend of those movements, the turning, the tilting to the right, and the extending are what makes that swing look smooth when you go through. It's the timing of all of those. So with a mirror video, keep your head where it starts, extend the arms, chest and rib cage up, right shoulder down. Extend the arms, chest and rib cage up, right shoulder down. Now that's how I would be practicing <clears throat> those movements. Now, I'm just gonna give you a quick little drill to assist with the arm straight and feels if those feels themselves don't accomplish that move for you. All right guys, so just the piece to keep in mind, if when I'm saying keep your arm straight, that's hard for you to feel, I would just go with the old faithful, a bucket drill. Grab a range bucket, put it right in the middle of your sternum, 
and squeeze it together with your biceps. Now, you don't need to be able to hit balls with this, but what this does is it helps keep your elbows the same distance and it forces you to start to feel what I'm mentioning with your body. I'm turning, I'm keeping my right shoulder down, but my chest and my rib cage are up towards the sky. So just a little caveat, if you guys have a hard time with the arm piece, utilize the bucket. All right guys, so a couple of things I know some of you are thinking and may want to ask, let's go over. Uh, the first thing I'd say is this does work with all clubs. This would be the same with a sand wedge or a driver. Uh, the second thing would be how you practice this. And what I would say when you're practicing is we like two rehearsals, one hit, and filming your swing to confirm what you're doing. So that would look like this, normal setup, arm straight, turn, chest up, right shoulder down, that's one. Arm straight, turn, chest up, right shoulder down, that's two. And then I'm gonna hit that, and I'm gonna record this, and look at it and see, hey, did I do all of those pieces correct? If not, what do I need to adjust? That's how I would do the practice piece. Um, the same thing applies with the driver. And then how do I go to full swing? Would be I wanna feel the same thing and then just allow my arms to fold up over my shoulder. So when I go from this position to full swing, I'm, I'm pretty close to done. I'm gonna keep my body motion going, but I'm just gonna allow the club to fold over. What I feel is I'm trying to get the club head as far away from me as possible, head back, chest up. So even full swing, same feels. I feel like that club head at this point is as far away and then I just let it wrap over. So you're still feeling that same width, same upper body pieces. So just a couple uh, questions, hopefully. If you do have any questions, like we mentioned, leave a comment down below. This is golf swing basics, right? There's more details to this, but if you wanted to get your follow through and your downswing perfect, you would work on those pieces. Arm straight, extension, tilting to the right, right? Having the full turn, those are the checkpoints. If you guys have any questions, as always, leave a comment down below. If you guys did enjoy this video, we'll put a similar card on the screen. If you wanna check out cogornogolf.com, I would love to work with you. We'll also put that on the screen. Thank you guys for watching.